You've probably seen this sign, but you definitely don't want to see this sign. Discovered in 2004 in Boulder Creek, they've since been found in 11 Mile Canyon, Deckers, and the Dream Stream, as well as the Denver South Platte. They're spread by us, by anglers. It's tough to see them, they're tiny. Common ones are small, but the mud snails are even smaller. It's quick and easy to check if there are any mud snails in the river you're fishing. With the point up, the opening should be to the right, and there should be six or more swirls. Use your finger to uh, run <clears throat> along the rock, and you'll feel the mud Successful snails. Successful anglers tiny. in Colorado do this anyway, to check for what's hatching to match the hatch, or to see the, how prolific the uh, bug life is in the stream. In this case, check a little closer to the shore in the slow moving waters, particularly in large rocks that are partially submerged, gravel bed with uh, some mud present. If you find mud snails, you know you're gonna be, have to be extra careful to clean your boots. Google Denver Trout Unlimited mud snails to find out on how to report them for tracking purposes. Clean boots will last longer and so will your great fly fishing in Colorado. One way is to wash and dry for 10 days if you can before you fish next. The easiest way to stop the spread I've found, and this is what I do myself, when you're moving to a new spot on the river, you don't want to take any mud snails to the new spot. So with a spray bottle between stops when you're back at the car, spray those boots, sole, and the laces with a mix. River construction crews freeze their boots, but I've found that it's really pretty straightforward to mix up a four gallon batch by mixing up three teaspoons of root killer copper sulfate in a five gallon bucket of water and dunk your boots for 10 seconds. Does this work? Well, we tried it out on the uh, mud snails that we found at Johnson Habitat Park in the middle of September. Here's what happened. We collected these snails off the rocks, as you saw earlier, and put them in a plastic bag overnight. About the conditions that uh, you'd have on your boots if you were going out fishing the next day. You can see in this six second time exposure that uh, most of them are alive and well the next day. We poured the water off and gave them a quick rinse with a Robin's Egg Blue mix of 300 part per million copper sulfate and then filled the test tube back up again with river water. As you can see, none of these snails would be able to infect another river. I repeated this experiment a couple days later with, uh, by just air drying the, the snails, then uh, rinsing them with uh, tap water, dividing the snails in half, and then treating the other half with a very weak solution of just four parts per million copper and there was still a hundred percent mortality even with a very weak solution. A study in Northern California on Putaw Creek by California Department of Fish and Game along with the Federation of Fly Fishers also found it was true that the treating boots with a very weak solution of copper sulfide, readily available online or in hardware stores, is 100% effective against New Zealand mud snails, in fact all kinds of snails. Just like any cleaning solution or household chemical, do not get it in your eyes. Don't feed it to the dog. Keep it away from the kid. You have to be very careful and not put it in a waterway. When you're finished with it, you should dispose of it by flushing it down the toilet into a sewage or a septic system. This is exactly what happens when these two systems are treated with copper sulfate root killer. If you need more information or would like more information on the struggle against New Zealand mud snails in Colorado, uh, Google New Zealand mud snails, Denver Trout Unlimited. Let's all keep our boots clean and we'll stop the spread of this invasive species and keep our streams open and our fish healthy.